President Abdel Fattah Hassisi held a meeting with uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli as well as a number of ministers to follow up on the train collision which took place in Suha Governorate on Friday. During the meeting, the President was briefed on the latest developments of the ongoing investigations. The details. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has directed the application of all measures to achieve balance between the comprehensive upgrading plan of the railway systems and the operation of trains nationwide. The President's remarks came during his meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli, Justice Minister Omar Marwan, Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, Minister of Health Hala Zaid, Minister of Transport Kamal al-Waziri, and Minister of Social Solidarity, Naveen al qabash as well as a number of ministers. Presidential spokesperson Ambassador Bassem Rodi said that during the meeting, President al-Sisi was briefed on the latest updates concerning the collision of two trains in Suhaag Governorate. The Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al-Nahyan and uh, Dubai ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al-Maktoum, Lebanese Prime Minister-designate Saad al-Hariri, Libyan Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Dbeiba, Jordan's Foreign Ministry also mourned the victims and expressed solidarity with the Egyptian government and people. Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil ibn Abdul Rahman al Asumi, expressed his deep condolences to the Egyptian government and people. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and a number of ministers held a press conference to review the latest updates concerning the two trains that have collided in the Upper Egyptian Governorate of Suhag on Friday. Earlier, the Prime Minister and a number of ministers had arrived at the scene and visited the injured. Here are the details. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli vowed that the government will continue to upgrade railway projects to prevent deadly train accidents and promised deterrent punishment to the culprits behind the deadly collision after the conclusion of investigations conducted by the Prosecutor General. The Prime Minister warned that the railways have seen decades of uh, neglect and lack of development which brought the Egyptians to a very dangerous situation, yet hundreds of billions of pounds have been allocated to address the crisis. Madbouli added that the challenge is complicated because the development process has to take place while the facility is operated, as it's difficult to make a decision to stop it because it serves millions of Egyptians every single day. During the press conference, the Prime Minister also announced that the government will disperse 100,000 Egyptian pounds compensation to the families of the deceased as per presidential orders. Meanwhile, a compensation sum of 20 to 40,000 Egyptian pounds will be disbursed to the families of the injured depending on their degree of injury. For her part, Minister of Health Dr. Hale Zaid said all those injured in the train collision have been evacuated from the site of the crash and transferred to hospitals in different governorates. The Health Ministry formed a crisis and emergency room in Suhag to follow up with the accident's repercussions provided also any needed medical supplies and the medical teams to treat the injured. She added that the medical team from Cairo was dispatched to Suhag immediately to assist in treating the injured. Zaid added that 90 cases checked out of hospitals after receiving the needed treatment and at least 30 are expected to be discharged today. 11 cases underwent surgery and 3 in life-threatening condition were transferred to Nasser Institute in Cairo to receive critical surgery. For his part, uh, Minister of Transport Kamil El Wazir reviewed the ministry's plan to develop the railway sector, noting that £225 billion are allocated to upgrade the railways. Let's have a closer look. Minister of Transport Kamil El Wazir extended his heartfelt condolences to the victims of the deadly collision of two trains in Sohag on Friday, wishing a speedy recovery for all the wounded. Addressing a joint uh, briefing, 
with the, the host of ministers on Saturday, El Wazir revealed that a sum of 225 billion Egyptian pounds had been allocated for a plan to upgrade the national railway system. He noted that the former amount covers establishing and joining new railway lines at 73 billion Egyptian pounds, importing new train carriages and locomotives at 48 billion, and improving the condition of rail tracks and level crossings. He put the sum set aside for upgrading the railway signaling systems at 46.8 billion, renewing and testing railroads and machinery at 27 billion, and improving performance and safety of railway workers at about 5 billion. Al Wazir went on to say that the railway service upgrade plan also targets restoring discipline among the sector's workers, improving safety and sanitary conditions, renewing workshops and word and railways, um, training institutions for the graduation of highly efficient cadres that can handle modern railway equipment. Transportation Minister El Wazir also added that the first phase of the overall development will end on June 30, 2022 and includes receiving 110 new locomotives. He said starting from the 1st of July, six Spanish trains and 1,300 Russian vehicles will be imported. The minister also said that, that uh, the international companies are working with the Egyptian ones to develop the railway signaling system in Egypt. He noted that the second phase of railways development uh, that will end by mid-2024 aims at uh, refurbishing 260 locomotives, 1,000 cargo vehicles and 200 sleeping vehicles. The minister also said that the government has decided to use the ATC system to protect the safety of the passengers and avoid accidents, although this system will delay trains by 25%. Public Prosecutor Councillor Hamad Asawi headed a team of investigators to the train collision site where an investigation into the cause of the accident immediately began. The public prosecution called on all bodies to abstain from issuing any statements or remarks about the possible causes of the accident before the end of the ongoing investigations. Separately, head of the Administrative Prosecution Authority Councillor Asam al minshawi ordered to open an investigation into the accident and assign the specialized technical committees to examine and submit the reports on their findings to the prosecution. The head of uh, the Suez Canal Authority said that the efforts to dislodge a huge container ship blocking the canal had allowed the stern and rudder to move, but he could not predict when it would be refloated. The SCA chairman, Osama Rabia, said that he hoped it would not be necessary to resort to removing containers from the ship to lighten the load, but the strong tides and the winds were complicating the efforts to free it. The details. The Suez Canal Authority chief said today that strong winds was not the main reason for the grounding of the MV Ever Given cargo ship in the waterway. Samar Abiyya said at a press conference in Suez that strong winds and weather factors were not the main reasons for the ship's grounding, adding that there may have been technical or human errors. Asked when the ship could be afloat again, he suggested it was possible today or tomorrow, depending on the ship's responsiveness to the tides. The MV Ever Given, which is longer than four football fields, has been wedged diagonally across the canal since Tuesday, blocking one of the world's most vital waterways in both directions. The Canal Authority chief said over 300 vessels are now treading water at either end of the canal, which links the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. Addressing journalists in the Suez, Ravia outlined Egypt's efforts with tugboats and excavators to free the bow and propeller of the mega ship in order to reopen the canal. Ravia noted that on 10.30 p.m. Friday, the propellers had been able to spin, although not at full speed. However, they are jammed again due to the changing tides and rescuers had had to resort to excavators again overnight to continue the dredging process. We also noted that the blockage had caused no fatalities or pollution. The ship's grounding is holding up some $9.6 billion worth of cargo each day between Asia and Europe, according to Lloyd's List data. We estimated that Egypt is losing some $12 to $14 million in revenue from the canal for each day it is closed. The United States also said it was already to send support, including a team of U.S. Navy experts. 
The Biaf thanked the U.S. for its support along with China and the United Arab Emirates. Five people died and 24 were wounded as a building collapsed in Cairo. The Cairo Governorate said in a statement that the Governorate's crisis room was informed of the collapse of a building consisting of a basement, a ground floor and nine upper floors. It said that five people were confirmed dead and 24 wounded in the building located in Gisr Suez district, the east of Cairo. Cairo Governor Khalid Abdelahal immediately went to the site of the accident, accompanied by the civil protection forces. He also inspected SLM Hospital to check on the injured, as 18 were discharged after receiving treatment and six others are still hospitalized, but they are in a stable condition. The International Committee of uh, the Red Cross said that the country's money